to reorganize this a bit um, because I wasn't here this morning simply. I arrived only a bit after my presentation was scheduled to start. Um, I know we are running a bit late. Um, nevertheless, I'll try to um, just focus a bit and make this uh, quick. Um, I'll start with uh, a bit of background and then uh, the second half of the presentation will be more videos, more visuals, um, some to, to, to see what it looks like. So it's about Q Field. Um, maybe first about us shortly. We are uh, OpenGIS, a small company, a Swiss, Switzerland based company. We're doing um, a lot of QGIS development, um, mobile development, which will be here. Um, we do database. Um, mostly development and consulting work. Um, me, I'm uh, Matthias Kuhn. Maybe you've heard my name before. I do a lot of uh, QGIS core development and um, I did also most of the development for Q field here. Um, what we do is really we, we, we love open source and, and we live open source. So everything we do, um, whenever possible, we, we release it under um, an open source license. Um, normally on GitHub very often, so for example, this presentation here, if you ever need to present QField somewhere, feel free, grab it on GitHub, and um, make your edits, make your pull requests against it, and use it. So, um, why QField? Why did we even start with this project, um, which I remember I presented here three years ago already, when it just um, was about to start. So the reason is just simply because data is outside the office. So sometimes we have sensors, um, airborne sensors that deliver us the data, but very often we also have people that need to go out, they need to collect um, the data somewhere. Um, these people can come from forestry. There's a lot of engineering, um, like pipe networks, for example, people going out and seeing what's behind some covers that are on the streets, etc and that uh, um, gather data somewhere and want to bring this data they found out, uh, they found outside back to the office, back into their GIS systems where they can analyze it and visualize it, use it for reporting, whatever. Um, so what is QField? How does this help here? QField is um, a mobile-based data collection app for QGIS. Um, that means um, you can just simply grab a tablet like this one here which we use in some projects because it's a bit rougher and uh, waterproof, and, um, and load it onto this if it hasn't got Android, any recent Android version on it, starting from, from 4.3, then um, QField will, will run on it. Um, it has a very minimalistic user interface, um, which is optimized for touch devices. You may remember that at some point we brought um, QGIS itself onto tablets, uh, but that turned out to be a very bad idea because all the buttons were really, really small, hard to hit. So we um, used, um, we, we had to invent something new with uh, bigger buttons. But still, it hides the full power of QGIS under the hood. So that you understand this, this is not like a separate app. This is really this QGIS running with the new interface on the tablet. So basically, when you, what, what you see on your desktop computer on the map, all the styling, raster engine, etc. It's what you get on, on the <coughs> device as well, even though it's under a different, behind a different button. What can you do with it? You can just comfortably prepare the work on your QGIS desktop once. What that means is we separate a bit the concepts of, of end users and project designers. When you look at QGIS, there are a lot of uh, things that um, you, most of you probably in here are using. Um, which is um, styling, setup, um, labeling, all these things that you can configure and fine tune anywhere on your project, um, forms, etc. And then there are um, end users, in, or at least in many of the situations where I work, I have other users that will then use the pre configured projects for their work. That's what we do here as well. So you take QGIS on a desktop computer, you prepare the project so that other people can, after that, go out and take a pre-configured project and work on the field. So these are the people outside. They don't have to think about how an attribute should now be uh, best visualized, etc. <laughs> they can just focus on entering appropriate values for these attributes. Um, inside QField, 
it's uh, simple to use, although I have heard otherwise today. <laughs> um, it opens QGIS project, so it's not something separate. It's a QGIS project that you can put onto the device and open the QGIS project. It uh, supports <coughs> um, most of the QGIS data providers. Some of them um, are a bit problematic because of licensing, for example. And um, it does all the QGIS rendering, so all these renders, um, <coughs> categorized, rule-based, etc. they're just supported. Um, it takes the same configuration than the QGIS <coughs> forms. So if you have a configured uh, data entry form for QGIS, it will look not exactly the same, but very, very similar on your um, on Q field. Um, there are not all widgets supported yet, um, but um, we are looking into bringing more and more of these widgets into Q field as well. Um, the drag and drop designer is something to arrange forms. So when you have a, a drag and drop designer based form, um, you can also just use that the same way on to organize all the attributes. If you have 50 attributes for a layer, you probably want to organize them in some way. Um, conditional visibility, um, I think I'll just show that later <coughs> on, easier. Um, attribute constraints, default values, and taking photos, these are all other um, features, um, which I'll show in a second. Last time I was here, you could just digitize points, so now you can also digitize lines and polygons. Um, for a couple of weeks, we can also now um, directly use the set coordinates delivered by um, a GPS device, positioning device. Um, you can snap to existing um, features. You can attach an, in you normally just use the internal GPS, but sometimes people have higher precision devices, so you can also attach higher precision devices to it. <laughs> and then um, you have a legend where you can see what classes, for example, you have in your data. So let's see what it is. Um, I hope this works from here. <coughs> okay. <laughs> so um, here we have um, the legend. This is actually a quite old version. Um, if you see the flickering um, sometimes, that's mostly due to video recording. Um, you can see exactly at which coordinate you're putting something, and um, the distance, the length of the line you're digitizing and then um, choose which layer you want to digitize on. Actually, you can configure for each layer individually. <coughs> um, if, you, if you want your user to be able to digitize it, so on some layers you can just make them read-only, so user cannot um, edit the data and then... <laughs> Perfect, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was had to digitize lines and polygons. <coughs> um, basically, when you digitize something, you choose just the layer you want to digitize on, on the left, in the list. Then you have um, the buttons down here to add points, to remove points, and um, to save the feature when you've finished it. So this is how... Um, it works. So, um, as I said, one of the newer one of the newer features is also that um, you can um, do snapping. So this is like how it normally works when you digitize a polygon. You can just uh, paint it somewhere, um, enter many, many fields, um, for which are very important here. Um, and when you go close to an existing, um, according to the snapping configuration of your project, when you go close to an existing object, <coughs> it will just snap to this one, um, which um, was quite something that we had to think a bit of how to do it, because we had always this um, crosshair in the center, and then how we would still uh, properly integrate the snapping. So that, then you can snap to existing features, 
And what's also interesting is that you see a number up there, AB1206, etc. You see the same number here again, um, which is taken from an intersection with an existing layer. So what we have here, um, the setting is this, that we have um, some pre-existing layer which with numbers of um, these units, of these area units where, um, which we want to add some new information to. But we are not allowed to edit the existing layer. So we have a second layer and we just extract geometrically the number from the second layer uh, from the first layer and add it as a, um, as a for input to the second layer, which allows us later on to join the two information back together, <coughs> um, which is done all with the expression engine in the background, which is um, uh, able to do this via aggregates, uh, which is quite a complex thing. I think I have somewhere uploaded uh, <laughs> the, the expression you use for this. Maybe if you can, you can ask me if you need this somewhere. Um, there's something also, um, often you want to have different layers in your project, right? Um, and as in Q field, you don't, you cannot just load a layer because if you load a layer, I maybe stop it shortly. Um, if you load the layer, um, you have to style it. You have all to do all this configuration work, which you don't want to basically to do on your, um, on your tablet. You want to do this beforehand in the office. So we make heavy use of um, map teams, so you can switch between different map teams, map teams with pre-styled layers and layer combinations. This is one, two, four, four and eight. Okay, so um, you can switch between these different map themes here where you can just enable and disable differently styled uh, layers throughout your edit session to, for, for different tasks which are at hand outside. This way you can avoid to manually load layers late, later on. Um, while you're digitizing, what also happens often is that you um, don't want to enter the same attribute over and over and over again, but you want to control very specifically which attributes should be remembered and which attributes not. So you always have on the right these checkboxes where you can say which of the attributes you want to reappear when you <coughs> digitize your next feature. So you can, you can very precisely control what you want to remember, what you want to um, not want to re-enter each time. Um, a picture sometimes says more than a thousand words. So um, what's also possible is that you add a photo from the device's camera to um, a feature which you're digitizing. So here we have um, a project where you just um, during summer, um, back home is like 33 degrees right now, um, where we took, made a, a very small collection of very good gelaterias, of very good ice cream stores, <laughs> and we took a picture of these. <laughs> so um, then we could also rate how good they are, and this one is really good if you ever go to Thun, um, it's a great one, and um, then you can um, relate, you can take a picture for these. Um, very often it's about entering attribute data, right? So when you're entering attribute data, um, it must be easy for someone to enter the values. You don't want to use the, the display keyboard all the time. So that's why you can um, add a lot of uh, different, different um, things or um, safety nets around it. You can, for example, have um, the some kind of um, constraints. 
and the constraint says here, for example, that the name must be at least three characters long. And as long as you don't haven't entered more than three characters, um, you're not allowed to save the feature. This is, by the way, also possible with QGIS 2.18 because we required it for this one. So we tried a lot of features. We tried to bring back upstream into QGIS wherever possible. Um, you better don't go to this pizza place here. <laughs> um, you can um, enter a um, normal text data with the um, keyboard. You can do um, some selection lists. Um, you can have date widgets, calendars, and you can organize all your data on different tabs. And what's very interesting here, I'll just switch shortly back to this one. Um, you can have um, some elements that only appear if you check some other elements. So only if you check here that you also offer takeaway, it will give you the whole list of additional um, possibilities to choose from. Um, also something that was brought to QGIS itself, 2.18, 3.0, um, because of this. So these are some of the functionalities that we have implemented right now. Um, and there is certainly more that we could do, that we want to do, that we will do at some point. Um, something that we really want to do is um, hybrid editing, network state based editing. So right now you either have to have a full time connection, internet connection to your Postgres database or you have to take all the data offline and carry it with you in some file and then resynchronize it later on when you're back in the office. So what would be great is if it was possible to just synchronize the data whenever you're online, whenever you're on your 3G whatever network and um, then when you go offline suddenly then you just keep on working on your offline copy of the data. So that's something we really want to do. Um, we're still looking for um, spot the possibility to work on this. Um, we want to have a GPS status information into, into attributes. So um, when you're working with high precision GPS devices, you have different states. So you know how precise actually the, um, the data is you're saving. And later on, when you're back in the office, you want to know how accurate the data is that you can collect somewhere on the field. So you know if you can trust some point, if it's actually where it is supposed to be. And um, we would be very pleased to see that um, saved into attributes. Um, something else which would be awesome is connecting external sensors, let's say, um, and some monocarbon um, sensors or humidity sensors or whatever, and collect data quickly with this um, temperature or so um, uh, directly into, into um, a feature from a sensor. Um, iOS support, I don't know why, but we need it. <laughs> um, or editing geometries would also be something that's, that's really awesome. And um, of course, if someone wants to get an idea, we are very, very open-minded and interested in hearing more interesting um, things that could possibly be done. So uh, please, uh, we do a lot of uh, open source work um, and we give everything to you that we do. <laughs> if you help us somehow accomplish this, it will be even better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>